Are you one of those people wondering if XRP2 is real? And whether it has what it takes to compete with XRP? Well, you're not alone. In recent months, there's been loads of people asking me in, on Twitter and all over social media about what this XRP2 is. And today I'll be diving into all the facts about XRP2 and determining whether it has the potential to be a major player in the world of cryptocurrencies or whether this whole thing is just another attempt to fud us out of our bags. First of all, XRP2 was started in South Carolina on July the 1st, 2013. And at some point from then all the way up until now, they actually changed their name and they changed from XRP Fund 2 just to XRP2 LLC. And it's recognized as an MSB. The definition of an MSB actually varies from country to country because every country has varying levels of regulation. But in general, money services businesses, MSBs, are financial institutions that offer services that would typically be offered by the banks, such as exchanges of currency or the transfer of funds. In the USA, MSBs are regulated by one authority. That is FinCEN, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, which is within the Department of the Treasury. And FinCEN has the authority to require the MSBs to register with the agency and to implement different features. For example, an anti-money laundering program, the AML. I'm going to tie this all back in, just bear with me. And under these FinCEN regulations, certain participants in the virtual currency ecosystem, including exchanges and administrators, are considered MSBs. That means they're required to register with FinCEN in order to comply with the regulatory system in place. In 2013, FinCEN released this document basically outlining the legal framework for virtual currencies to work with it. In that document, they define exchanges as the following. Engaged as a business in the exchange of virtual currency for real currency, funds, or other virtual currency. And they define administrators as those engaged as a business in issuing or putting into circulation a virtual currency and who has authority to redeem to withdraw from circulation such virtual currency. So if you're now opening your mind to what this all means actually for, for our space in the cryptocurrency world, you're probably thinking of a few names here that this would actually affect. Basically every exchange and all of the ledgers that these blockchains are built on. But here's where it gets sticky. Under the Bank Secrecy Act and its regulations, MSBs are required to develop and maintain an effective anti-money laundering program. And this includes designating an individual who is responsible for compliance, conducting all the training that has to happen as well, and establishing the procedures for reporting suspicious activity. And this is where it all links back in to Ripple Labs and XRP2. Because Ripple, Ripple Labs and XRP2 were accused of violating federal law by failing to register as an MSB and then also failing to implement an effective AML program. So of course that was then investigated by the US Attorney's Office and FinCEN. And the main thing I take from all of this actually is let's get the biggest worry out the way here. XRP2 is not a token, okay? So for everyone else who's been talking about it as a token, I hope you now understand with all this back information that I've given, it's not a token. It's actually a legal subsidiary of Ripple Labs. It's a company. So you might now be asking, oh, phew, well, if it's not a token, then what's the point of that company? Well, maybe David Schwartz can provide some information on this. XRP2 is the name of the legal entity owned by Ripple. It's similar to the way that Apple has entities licensed to do Apple Pay. So all of Apple doesn't have to be regulated that way. It's a legal entity, an LLC to be specific. And of course, this makes absolute sense. This is the smart way to do it but you know me. I wanted to know why a company would do that in the first place. After all, there could be secrets lying within there that I would have missed if I didn't dig a little further. So there are loads of reasons why a company might choose to create a legal entity as a subsidiary to the main company, especially for licensing purposes. The first reason is the separation of liability, meaning as a company, you're separating yourself from some of the legal aspects going on within the company but in a subsidiary. So rather than any lawsuits being brought to your main company, they're actually being brought to a subsidiary, which allowing that distance is probably a better thing for a multitude of reasons for the larger company. And this is actually especially important if the products or services that you're offering as the main company are kind of in a risky space or subject or likely to be subject to legal issues, which when you're talking about cryptocurrency, is probably a smart thing to do, right? Another reason is for increased flexibility. Having a separate legal entity for licensing makes a company more versatile 
well. They can make changes. Whenever licensing regulations change, they are quicker to adapt when those only affect the subsidiary because the subsidiary can move a little bit faster than the main corporation. And remember, in, in terms of licensing, you've got all the different countries have different licensing regulations across the world, right? So sometimes it's better to have geographic locations all around the world handling these legal issues. It's a lot quicker that way and more efficient. And moving on to number three of the reasons why you would create one of these legal entity subsidiaries is because it makes everything simpler. It's just easier. It's just easier to manage the activities from subsidiaries rather than putting that burden on the parent company. Then of course, as you would have imagined with these big corporations making these moves, there are probably tax benefits as well. You know, there's probably ways you can structure these businesses to allow for a better flow of tax and be more tax efficient, right? So in conclusion, I don't think there's any need to be worried about XRP2. And I know there was a lot of confusion and uncertainty and FUD put around about XRP2, but I want you to view it in this way. If a company like Apple has these legal entities that handle licensing, for example, and they've got loads of other entities all around the parent company handling all of these different issues, that is the structure of a very well established and global company. And if you think about it like this, Ripple Labs and Ripple in general, they're demonstrating that they are able to operate at this incredible scale. They're thinking like a company like Apple and they're demonstrating that long-term focus. It's just another reason to believe that Ripple is even more positioned to take over the world. So don't let the concerns about XRP2 hold you back from making your next XRP purchase. Obviously, it's not financial advice, just what I'm doing and how I've taken the information that I've researched. Obviously, you can do your own research, but I've only really talked about stuff from source material. So you can it's all out there available for you as well. I think Ripple is doing all the right things. I think XRP2 is a smart play by Ripple. In fact, I think XRP2 is just a sign to us that Ripple are well positioned to take over the world with this business structure that's replicated across all of the biggest entities in the world. I think this is positive news. And just like me, right after hearing all of that, you might be heading over to where you buy your crypto. I want to tell you about an exchange that is working for me right now, and that is Ubit. So Ubit's really good because it's a really easy user interface. And as soon as you buy on Ubit, you're actually able to transfer from Ubit to a cold storage wallet immediately. So there's no holding period on that. If you hate going to the other exchanges that seem to be quite complicated or you're new to crypto, this is going to be perfect for you because it's really easy to use app and the interface just works perfectly with the added benefit of being able to send it to cold storage immediately. Especially if you're somebody who just wants to buy crypto on your phone and then forget about it. You don't have the time to go and sit down at a computer and use a computer, although they do have a website where you can do that. Just pull out the phone, buy your XRP, send it to cold storage, all done on your phone, easy user interface, job done. Anyway, try not to get fudded out of anything. These, 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 this FUD that's coming out is crazy. XRP2 as a token? Seriously? Come on. Anyway, that's what I'm here for. I'm not mad. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. I'm here to break down some of the FUD that comes in and tell you what the reality is and maybe go into too much detail like I did in this video. But anyway, whenever FUD comes out, stay emotionless and I'll see you in the next one.